We're going to start laying out the H brace now, and the first thing we want to do is lay out the front stretcher that's going to hold the two uprights apart. Uh, as part of this, to kind of add some uniqueness, I do put the uh, bung hole in the middle of that. One of the things to be careful about, though, a lot of wine barrels, because it has a, a hole there, it's weak in the wood on either side, and that will crack. It's okay if it cracks on one side, but if it cracks on both sides, then it becomes uh, pretty structurally weak. In fact, my uh, son, who only weighs about 30 pounds, sat on this one and snapped it in half. Um, so you can imagine just uh, uh, how structurally impaired that, that wood became because of those, those cracks. They don't appear to go that deep. Uh, and usually they don't. To start the layout, first thing we're going to do is find our center line. Um, I, hopefully, I may adjust that a little bit depending, try to keep the bung hole as close to the center as I can. And then again, I'm just going to use a template that I uh, copied off the, the plans that, were that I uh, purchased and uh, put on the tracing paper and I'll just lay that out and mark out the key points. I'm not worried about the overall length. I'll trim that later after I get my uh, final, uh, when I get the uprights on. But I will lay out the inside marks. Right? And then there's a cutout uh, to curve out for the, the curvature of the seat. And this is kind of just a, a reference and I'm just going to kind of scratch this in real quick because it is going to change uh, more based on the way I made changes to the changes I made to the chair itself. And we are now ready to take this over to the bandsaw and we'll do a rough cut. We're going to do a quick cut out just right along here to remove that material. Uh, and we'll do the rest of the shaping with a, uh, uh, with a belt sander. Getting ready to cut the uprights um, for the H-brace. Once again, I just used a template uh, that uh, I made uh, using the uh, plans that, that came with it. Um, I have my chop saw set up. One of the things I can't do though is just set this on, the, on a chop saw uh, bed and then cut it because it, it is curved. Uh, so I do support it. Uh, first of all, I want to support the full length um, with, a, with a, just an old pine board here. And then I put a uh, used barrel stave. This is one I have to be cutting plugs out of. And I'll set that on there to support it after I make the cut so that it doesn't uh, bind up in the saw. And the other thing is because it is tapered on both ends and fat in the middle, I'm going to make sure that I pull it away from the end of the board just a hair bit uh, before I make my cut. One quick tip. Uh, don't throw away any of your scrap because you'll be using them to cut the plugs to fill all the screw holes, that, the, the countersinks that you've made um, when you constructed the chair. We're now ready to assemble the H brace. Uh, we're going to use uh, the pieces that we marked earlier and cut to length. Uh, I do have them marked with a, a top, but not on top of them. And I'm going to temporarily install it with this call that I've attached to the work. The reason I need to do this is because they are curved and when I attach the the cross member, I want to make sure that it's uh, going to follow that curve and also keeps us, uh, this is the, the plane that it will be sitting when it's completed. The next thing I'm going to do is make a line across here at 13 inches. And this is one of the places where I deviate from the plans uh, because I found that this uh, dimension made it much easier and more comfortable to sit. Um, and it was more in fitting with the Adirondack style. If I can get it in here. Now that I have the pieces marked, um, I have the uh, horizontal piece here, the piece with the bung hole that we marked. We did cut out the, uh, the curve here, and I have the horizontal lines, and I'm going to line those up with the verticals, and I'll just start on one side. And I want to clamp as close to the middle as I can. Um, but we'll be putting some screws in here, we can do some adjustments when we need to. And I'm going to make the top of that, make the top of this piece come to that 13 inch line. Once everything's secure and my lines line up, I also want to make sure that my uh, the base of the front legs are actually going to uh, rest even on the ground. So I've done that, made my 13 inch mark, it lines up, and my horizontal lines that I marked also line up. Now, even though we can't do square, we are going to make sure that everything is symmetrical. For checking some, uh, the symmetry, all I'm going to do is just take some diagonal measurements here. That's about 23 and a half. And 23 and a half, and a little bit off. And 
these dimensions come into play when I'm actually um, going to assembly. Now we're also going to check our total distance. Now we're just going to secure it with a couple screws on each side for right now. I'm using a number eight full thread um, stainless steel wood screw. And we'll do the same on the other side. And there we go. Next, we'll install the copper rivets. Now that we have the H braces made, we're ready to put the copper rivets in. As you can see, they're still not real sturdy when you, or they're pretty wobbly. The plans themselves actually call for two um, carriage bolts to go through, but I didn't like the look of those. So uh, first thing I do is I'm just gonna mark a line down the length, three quarters of an inch in from each side. And then um, using a tape measure, I'm just going to measure up, and that should be, uh, we're going to measure up from the bottom of the leg, and we're going to make a line at 12 and 3 quarters, or excuse me, 12 and a quarter on each one. That'll be 3 quarters inch down from the top, yeah, or the bottom of the cross member, and that's just under 9 inches. Uh, looks like about an eighth of an inch under. So we're going to go ahead and measure to nine and five eighths, and we'll make a line. And we'll do that on both sides. Then we're going to drill a through hole at each intersection. And you want to make sure you drill from the front or put something in there to keep you from uh, blowing out. If you blow out the back, it's not a big deal. Now that I've drilled all my holes, I'm going to go ahead and sand this area because I don't want to have to sand the rivets. That puts kind of a brush finish on it, and I like it when it's more of a bright and smoother. Now that I've got the area sanded, and basically I'm trying to sand until I get to a finish point where I can put the finish on because uh, you really don't sand that too much on these pieces. They are a rustic piece. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I have uh, these copper nails, number nines, and they're three inches long. What I'm going to do, I got the nails from uh, Jamestown Distributors, which is a, a marine supply. And I'm going to put in a nail in all four corners, or in all four holes. The reason I do this is I put the, the, the rivets on, or pound the rivets down, they uh, can distort and, and move the holes around. It'll tighten this joint up quite a bit. So by having these in place in advance, I don't have to worry about trying to fish it through a, a hole with a, a kink in the middle. Now, for an iron underneath, um, this would be called the buck, I guess, if you if you were uh, riveting someplace else. I just have a little uh, piece of railroad iron here that um, I use as an anvil. And I want to make sure that that nail head is right on top of that uh, that anvil. You will notice that I'll check that, uh, make sure that that nail head is on there quite a bit as I'm doing it. Uh, there's two things you can get when you buy these. You can either get what's called robes or burrs. Um, and these are called burrs. These are just basically little copper washers. They're a little bit smaller diameter than the, than the nail, um, and it works perfect for us. The robes are more conical shaped, uh, and they're designed to continually tighten as you go. But we don't need to uh, concern about that. They're also quite a bit more expensive. So to drive the burr in place, um, typically there are uh, there's a tool called a rove, but we don't need that right now. This is just an old, I think it's an axle out of an old motorcycle uh, transmission. And I'm just going to put that on there, and I'm going to drive that down on there as tight as I can. I'm going to double check, make sure I'm good. Okay. Once I have it on there tight, it's not going anywhere. I'm going to take a pair of dikes here and cut this off pretty much flush. The top of that nail flies quite a ways, so you want to be careful and, and use eye protection. So again, I'm set in place. I'm just going to use a, a, a ball-peen hammer here. I'm going to hit it with the flat side a few times. 
That just gives me a place for the, uh, the rounded side of the, the hammer to hit. And then I'm just going to pin that into a nice little rose head. Before we get going much farther on the project, I'm going to stop and take the time to trim off these ears that are on the outside of this H brace here. Uh, it's a lot easier to do it now when it's uh, separated from the chair than it is after it gets assembled. To do that, we'll just put it in the vise and start sawing. Well, here's one of those areas where the learning curve is getting kind of steep for me. I accidentally forgot to turn on the mic, so I'll kind of walk you through this section of the chair build. Right now we're selecting the legs for the chair. To do this, we want to make sure that they're the same width, the same curvature, and they have the same hoop pattern because this will be seen. I'm going to use the template provided in the plans to cut the front of the leg to the correct shape so that it meets the front H brace accordingly. Once I've cut the leg to the correct shape, I'm, go I'm going to thin the end of the leg using a hand plane so that it fits snugly on the horizontal member of the H brace. Once this is done, I will measure my diagonals to make sure that everything is symmetrical and I'll attach a couple of blocks to the workbench to keep everything in place. Now I'm ready to attach the legs to the front H brace. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up. Line this up. Now I've scribed the front of this leg to the chair to make sure that it fits extra tight. Before I uh, go any farther in the assembly of the chair, I'm going to go ahead and start filling all the holes from the back and, and from attaching the legs to the H brace. If you have children, this is a great way to get them involved in the shop. I went over to the drill press and started cutting plug holes. Um, out of the scrap wood from a previous from, from previous chairs, and then I had commissioned them to uh, pull the plugs out of the blocks. Uh, so now, because you're going to use a ton of them, um, now I have a couple hundred plugs here that I can use uh, for the chairs that I'm I'm trying to build. I'll go ahead and I'll plug those. I'll also plug the holes from the pocket uh, drills well with oak plugs. One of the things I like to do when I'm putting the plugs in is make sure that I align the grain. It's just one of those little things that, that makes the project look that much, much better. Well, that completes this portion of the build. In the next podcast, we'll complete the construction and do a final wrap-up. As usual, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Until next time, keep it level, plumb, and square.